Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today we will be talking about uh, uh, Google Kubernetes engine. In short form, GKE allows configuring infrastructure for container, containerized apps such as networking, scaling, hardware and security. From security aspects, right, uh, it, it already contains hardened node operating system for apps which is containerized op uh, optimized uh, OS built-in security measures, integrated security posture monitoring tooling with security posture dashboards. So Kubernetes engine has scalability through horizontal pod autoscaler based on CPU usage metrics. Different kind of uh, autoscaling could be done using uh, metrics like cloud, pub, uh, publication subscriber, uh, queue length or average number of open connections per pod and number of instances of Kafka running in a cluster. So uh, introduction, Kubernetes is a open source orchestration tool for containers and it allows deployment of uh, containers on set of nodes called clusters. In short, Kubernetes is also called K8S. Uh, Kubernetes deploys a container in a pod and pod is the smallest deployable unit in K8s. So we will go through different uh, definitions and uh, components within Kubernetes in the coming slides. Each pod in Kubernetes gets a unique IP address. Uh, here deployment simply means a set of replica of same pods which could be scaled to multiple pods or uh, lesser number of pods and it could also be scaled uh, horizontally as well as vertically. It also contains uh, load balancer, it also contains external IP address, uh, it contains uh, master node and uh, a set of slave nodes. We will talk about that in the coming slides. Uh, a service groups is a set of pods together as shown uh, in archi architecture diagram which we will see in the coming slides. Uh, which contains a common endpoint for them to uh, you know uh, interact with so horizontal pod auto scaling wherein we add more pods so from infrastructure perspective this is taken care from cluster auto scalar that is called ca when pod cpu or memory reaches certain percentage let's say user has set 85 percent of cpu as the threshold so then uh, the CA, the cluster autoscaler automatically uh, spins up new pods. Similarly, in case of vertical pod autoscaler, right, there are there can be a different pod sizes which are maintained by node auto provisioning, also called as NAP. Uh, so, uh, node auto, provi uh, auto provisioning NAP. Uh, increases pod resources like uh, uh, CPU and memory to process more number of requests. So opposite is also true. When there is underutilization of pods, its scale down is triggered such that uh, the, the uh, CPU and memory of uh, certain pods are reduced. So using NAP with off mode uh, is suggested because it, it will help us to uh, calculate the recommendations uh, 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 that are ideally uh, when the pods are run for uh, weeks or months to uh, identify the uh, the values. Moving on to the next uh, section is basically uh, what is the difference between uh, Google Kubernetes uh, engine versus Google App engine. Uh, Google Kubernetes engine is simply a cluster management and orchestration tool for running your Docker applications whereas Google App engine is Google managed container. So they both try to provide you similar benefits but management uh, aspects of it are different. So GKE tries to provide you with more control over everything in your cluster whereas uh, GAE that is App Engine tries to get you run your app up and running with as much uh, management uh, which is from the user end uh, is provided. The drawback with GK is that you have more control, uh, so it is more work for you, but in GAE you can focus on your apps. Uh, so uh, in this sense, a GKE is more flexible in what you can achieve and um, uh, App Engine is uh, uh, it's more focused on how application works and how you are going to scale the applications. Uh, 
So these are some of the differences between uh, uh, Kubernetes engine and Google App engine. Moving on to the next uh, dashboard, horizontal pod auto scaling and uh, vertical po uh, pod auto scaling. So here, uh, let me open up the pen now. So the uh, what are uh, pods? So the pod they host and manage containers that run your application. A pod can host. A single container or multiple containers. So uh, API server uh, provides entry point for interacting with cluster. In simple terms, it is a web server that listens for incoming HTTP request, exposes uh, Kubernetes API to external client. Uh, the master node has con has control plane which manages uh, the state of Kubernetes cluster. Uh, whereas the sub nodes, uh, what you see here is responsible for uh, running containers, master node con uh, control pane, then delegates the task to uh, these subset of uh, nodes. So network load balancers, the Kubernetes load balancer sends connection to first server in the pool until its capacity is reached, then sends new connection to the next available server. So, uh, in short, uh, the public IP is defined, which is external IP, which provides an interface from the load balancer to connect to Kubernetes uh, for processing. Let's talk about a demo. Uh, creating a basic Python application uh, and building a Docker image and creating a cluster with two nodes and deploying the image and testing the API. So these are uh, certain requirements which uh, suppose that I go into that particular uh, directory and then uh, uh, there is a Python program uh, so called app.py. So we'll talk about what is app.py. Uh, so app.py which is uh, attached here in the uh, below descriptions. Uh, in the YouTube and you can find that app.py is nothing but a Flask framework and the Flask is a micro web framework within the Python which uh, helps us to support a mini uh, applications. So here this particular application is a simple uh, hello world application which is displayed in the um, uh, local host and uh, uh, under port 8080 which is the default HTTP port and then uh, we again create a docker file for this particular uh, uh, application and then uh, uh, we basically uh, register this particular uh, application under the docker file you can ignore the commands which are only provided for your understanding and uh, given the uh, we build the docker using docker build minus t uh, gc uh, r dot io uh, and the project ID and the app name and then uh, we uh, authenticate the docker configuration. Uh, post that you can see that uh, the docker configuration is authorized uh, and we push the docker uh, image to the container registry. So the Google container registry contains all the docker images which we are, we are pushing. Uh, so um, once you get the output you will notice that uh, if the push to uh, container registry is successful or not and post that uh, we start creating a cluster with two nodes and a size memory size of 10 GB in for this particular exercise and uh, we select uh, a n1 uh, hyphen standard one uh, uh, machine type and uh, I, I'm getting an error let me check it could be because of the okay I think it's fine now on rerun and here you will notice that it is uh, 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 provisioning the uh, creation of cluster with two nodes and 10 GB data size so once it is complete we'll be able to see the uh, uh, clusters created so uh, Meantime, you can go through different documentation here, which is also available, and you can also create the cluster using the um, uh, the uh, GUI mode, uh, which is you can directly provide all the variable names, uh, name of the cluster, and the machine type which you want to use, and uh, what is the zone and number of nodes, uh, disk type, and so forth, the size, and so forth. 
so since we are using the uh, Google console to create, I think it's now created. Now let us see uh, the files are there. Next, uh, we enter uh, this particular command to connect to the cluster that we just created, right? So we just created a cluster uh, name uh, with the name and uh, I'm just getting an error for cluster. It basically it takes some time to show up in GUI. Uh, just uh, ignore it for some time and keep refreshing the page until you see it. Uh, but let us proceed uh, 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 to uh, basically use command uh, Google console commands to connect to the cluster and here it is. So uh, G Cloud uh, container clusters get credentials. So basically, uh, that's how, that's how we connect to the clusters, and then we enter below command uh, to deploy our image uh, to the cluster, and we are just uh, using a Q -B, uh, Q B E C T L command, and now the uh, image is deployed. Uh, now we uh, again uh, uh, have to provide a command to load uh, balance your uh, you know deployment by creating a service so basically we are creating a load balance uh, load balancer for your service and once we you uh, we use the expose command uh, under Q K U B E C T L command and then we enter the below command to list the services Q so K U B C T L get services will list the services and you will notice that uh, there are uh, initially the cluster IP is not uh, uh, is all provided but external IPs take some time to provision and load so keep refreshing or keep uh, you know executing the command until you get it now since we got the external IP uh, what you see here uh, there uh, so we can use this particular external IP and uh, copy the uh, copy the IP address and use it as a HTTP uh, URL. Uh, by doing so, you will finally see the output of Hello World, which is the nothing but the Python uh, hosted in Flask framework. Uh, so that's about it, folks. Uh, if you like the uh, content please uh, like the channel and subscribe to the channel and click on the like button thank you very much